Good morning. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Janine McGowan and I design cross stitch patterns under the name the blue flower. So I'm here to talk about cross stitch and this is the second official floss tube of 2021. It's been a roller coaster for so many of us, but hopefully we'll start to level out a bit more going forward. At least I know we could all use a break, but in the meantime, we at least have cross stitch to turn to and thank goodness for that. So jumping right into it, I'm going to start with stitching in action and it's a little bit of a roundabout way this time. I've had a lot of questions recently and a lot of questions overall about one of my earliest designs called Night Walk Down and it's because I used a thread as a new designer not realizing that was a general arts limited edition thread. So of course I had it in my stash not labeled as special just a thread with a name and lots of people have asked so basically every single finish of this is using a different <laughs> substitution for this thread so here's the model and the thread in question is this one here the blue color in the dress that's used one or two places other but primarily in the dress that's the main focus and what i wanted to do was showcase through the stitching in action section of the website a lot of the different colors that other stitchers have chosen to use for that dress and when people ask me I tell them I you know have a few colors that I found that are very close but not quite right however choose your fabric and since that is the very center focus of the design just choose a thread that you like on your fabric right in the middle and so I'm going to actually insert here a few stills from the stitching in action section of the website to hopefully inspire you for what other stitchers have done watch a few people getting drunk with power which you know i always approve of and uh, let's take a look if you ever need to look at stitching in action on the website get some ideas there's lots of good inspiration there from very creative stitchers so here you go And I love, I love all of them. I love the ones that are close to what I did. I love the ones that are wildly different. It's just a lot of fun and it always inspires me to see what other stitchers do with the design once it's, it's made its way into the world. So thank you all for sharing and to the people who continue to share photos with stitching in action. I know it's helpful to other people to see, yeah, just see some of the different options. So thank you. All right, next thing, what I'm stitching and plans. I have been stitching on models almost non-stop. I got a little bit of time at Christmas to do personal stitching, but since then it's been model, 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 and actually I am going to show one of those. So this is a variation on a design that I did for the Tudoro Sampergill to celebrate their 20th anniversary last year. So it's going to be available for general release this year starting at the digital market in or the virtual market in March. So I'm going to over the next few floss tubes go ahead and show each of those models just as a preview. And as part of the general website updates I am working on the freebie section. I've seen the draft version and we're working on how the website designer is making a video to teach me how to add new things as I need to so we can hopefully by the next floss tube have those up and you can start pulling some of those designs for free. But also I wanna have a section for shop owners that'll have a password so they can see upcoming designs, see the fabrics, get as much time as possible, maybe even two months to start thinking about whether they wanna order fabric or start looking for a substitution. So without further ado, this is Tudor B. I'm gonna get it as close as I can. It's a little floppy because it's filled with walnut shells, but not overfilled so that I can get it to lie nice and flat to take a photograph of it. So let's see if we can get a good, hopefully a good view here. Let's see. There we go. Got lots of roses around, um, a little sort of border, circular border in the center. Let's see if I can get my hands out of the way so you can take a proper look. It's just a little bee in a, a sort of quasi tutor inspired style. They actually asked for a tutor bee, so this is this is what I came up with with the little 
honeycomb designs and it was inspired initially by a book cover that I'd seen that I don't think was Tudor. It was a very elaborate metal and enamel and jeweled cover and it just had a shape that I liked because I went and looked back at my inspiration making the notes to talk about it and realized it doesn't look anything like this but that's that's where the design started. It's on fennel seed, 40 count linen from Coloring Cotton, and the back is, double check to make sure I don't see anything improperly, this beautiful, let's see, shallot, I believe, chenille from Lady Dot, and, or sorry, shallot velveteen, it's a little bit more pink than it's, it's reading a little bit muted here, but, and this barn door chenille on the edge. I'm actually really enjoying getting a little bit better with edging techniques, so um, learning to stitch that edging on just a little bit more cleanly without so many visible stitches. It's good practice for me. I won't get better if I don't practice. So Tudor B, there it is. Love it. All right, and that one's getting photographed later today, and as I said, it'll be available for sale at the digital market in March. So if your local shop isn't attending, I know they're still accepting lots of things. I'm hoping it'll be a really easy and positive experience for shop owners. They won't have to pay travel expenses and lug lots of things around, but they can still have time to chat and see all the new offerings and get the details. So if they're planning to attend that, then they will be, order, be able to order Tudor B from that one, and hopefully a lot of you will enjoy stitching it as much as I do. All right, oh, one more thing. This one is all charted using silks, and I did bring in one bit of very dark gray and PS just for the antennae, legs, and eyes. It's not used anywhere else in the chart, so certainly if you don't feel like buying a skein, you could just sub some cotton for that. And also, it doesn't take anywhere near a full skein of any of these colors, so you could easily split it up with people, or, as always, get drunk with power and uh, swap for your own things. So, there's that one. Stash Spotlight. This time I pulled some fun stuff. I really like the sort of traditional scissors shaped like a bird. You all know the ones. They, they come in all sorts of colors. These ones are, are gold tone, and this is, I think, the first pair of embroidery scissors I ever bought. So, I love these ones. Then last year at market, Michelle, who shared a room with me, got me this pair of large bird scissors, which are super fun. And I like that they're so big and hefty. Well, then I just recently found <laughs> this enormous pair of bird scissors. I don't know how functional they are, but I just love that they're beautiful and huge. So now I am in the midst of <laughs> assembling this collection of bird scissors of various sizes and I gotta say it just makes me happy. I'm not usually one for lots of scissors but I'm really enjoying these and I really love the gigantic ones although I don't know that I would use them as much as just look at them and appreciate their scale. So that's my stash spotlight. On to the world around. This week's edition is the pinion pine tree which grows quite a bit here in Nevada obviously also a lot of neighboring areas, California, Wyoming, Utah. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's not a spectacularly beautiful tree, although I like it. I think it's nice and scrubby. And uh, it, I think, is most favored for its wonderful pine nuts. And the official name of the tree is Pinus or Penis edulis. Probably should say Pinus. The edulis derives from the fact that so many parts of it are edible, certainly the nuts, but also I believe Native Americans have used the pine needles to make a tea. And as a last resort, you can eat the inner bark, although it sounds like it's not a preferred food source, more of a, if you don't have anything else, food source. But the nuts are spectacular, and you can eat them raw, roasted, ground into flour. Obviously, before I lived anywhere near a pine tree, I had eaten pine nuts and pinoles and all sorts of pasta and cookies and anything you can think of. They are a major food source for bear, chipmunks, quail, mule deer, squirrels, all sorts, and my husband who really loves them and remembers gathering them with his family when he was younger. They would just go out and collect pine nuts, which makes sense because they're not inexpensive to buy, but if you can just go out and gather them, that'd be lovely. 
I actually wanted to put a few pine pinion pines in our yard here, but it's all landscaped and set up with watering and they don't like a lot of water. A little bit, yes, and reliable, yes, but pretty much any traditional garden landscape plant will be getting more water than these guys want. And so in order to set up an area for it, we'd have to kill the established plants that were already there. So maybe in another house someday, if I get a chance to set up some of the areas where we can have big sagebrush and pinion pines, and then we can gather our own nuts, wouldn't that be fun? All right, questions from viewers. Lots of questions this time, so thank you very much. First up, from Tiffany Chapel. Can greyhounds jump fences? Yes, Tiffany, absolutely they can. When we first got a greyhound, we were told that our fence at the time was on the border of being too low. Fortunately, both our first and second greyhounds were not inclined to be jumpers, but Rye is a bit of a jumper. However, we have a nice tall fence now. Greyhounds, if they go through track training, are generally kept in very large dog crates. And so, the larger dogs, generally the males, would be kept in a crate that comes up to about here. Then there's a second layer of crates on top of those. And so the smaller dogs, generally the females, are accustomed to leaping up to table and counter height just to go to bed. And so they're notorious for hopping onto tables and counters. Fortunately, our counters are kind of shallow, so she doesn't necessarily see a good landing place, but she has absolutely hopped onto the table. I'm hoping that that was a phase that she will outgrow as soon as she's no longer a puppy. But uh, yeah, that was surprising. <laughs> so yes, they can jump fences. You have to be very careful. Um, not all of them will, but it's something you need to be prepared for. Thank you, Tiffany. From Desiree, does Rye ever help you in the kitchen? This circles back a little bit to Tiffany's question. She certainly tries, and now that she's tall enough to reach things on the counter and see things on the counter. We're working hard to teach her that you don't get to just help yourself to things on the counter or pop your head up when we're trying to cook and uh, potentially, you know, hurt yourself or, or certainly make a mess. So we're working on it. It's a work in process. All right. From Christy, who many of you know as Sarsa Girl Stitches and who designed the fabulous Pandemic Sampler, she sends me pictures periodically of her cat Cosmo watching Rye in the puppy video at the end. And she actually asked, how many of you have pets who watch TV? Rye is our first pet who watches TV in any way. And I don't know if it's part of her being a puppy and curious about everything and if it will fade or if she will continue to watch TV through her whole life. But I've seen pictures of lots of you and your pets watching floss tube or dog shows, whatever, whatever things. So I'd love to hear from you. If that is something that happens at your house, let me know. Thank you also to Karen Rivet. Last time I had mentioned the fabric dyer coming from Toowoomba, Australia, number 12 Stitch Co. And I'd said that I, it sounds like a word that has a meaning. Um, she let me know that it is an indigenous word meaning swamp. So thank you very much, Karen. I always like to know. And I have a question for you in addition to do your pets watch television. This week, I have been considering adding either a blog to my website or maybe just stepping up the emails. Traditionally, I've done an email when I have new things to release and only then, so as not to overwhelm people with a lot of checking in that doesn't have new products associated with it. But I thought I'd ask, would people like to have a blog? It might be, sadly mostly recipes and puppy pictures. But if that's something that you would like to see, let me know and we'll see what we can figure out. Maybe even have some guest bloggers come on and, and share the load a little bit, get some different perspectives, maybe, maybe from each of you. You could submit blog posts for that. That might be fun. So let me know your thoughts. I'd like to hear from you in the comments below or you can contact me on the website, blueflowerstitching.com. There's a new contact form, thanks to Lisa, the website designer. So let me know what you think. Best thing this week, Rye got to go to the dog park for the first time. We were waiting a little bit, certainly until she had all her shots and until we could find a good park that had the right mix. We found one locally that had a separate area for small dogs, which is great because our little dog, Dunkel, got to go and be in the small dog area where he did much better than we expected. And then if he continues to do well, he can join Rye in the large dog area. So you'll see a little video in the clips at the end of Rye at the dog park, checking out all of the other dogs. She didn't quite fully relax, but 
the boys are going to take her again today. So I'm hoping that she will maybe do some running and a little extra sniffing and start to really enjoy it. But we were also concerned she was getting nervous about getting in the car because every trip in the car so far has resulted in a vet visit. And so this is something to balance that out and think that car rides might actually be fun instead of resulting in shots, which I wouldn't like either. All right, let's see the giveaways. Onward and upward, we had two from last week to do. So the first one was giving away this chart from By the Bay Needle Art called Chilly Winter. Beautiful little chart, just quick. And the question was to tell me something using the word winter, love it, hate it, anything, just throw it in at the end. The winner of this one is JB. She says, I love winter because it just evokes peace and relaxation as long as I'm not driving in it. I can agree with you there. So JB, I will reach out to you in the comments and then if you can let me know your mailing address, we'll get that headed off to you. Congratulations. Second giveaway from last week was this beautiful piece of 40 count Hyperion linen. Again, difficult to show, but that gives you a good idea from Lap and Loops. And I had asked people to tell me using the word fabric, what they would stitch on such an unusual piece of linen. And I got so many good suggestions. So I don't know that I got them all, but there were wonderful ideas. Several people mentioned things with a nautical theme. So it, the fabric reminded people of tide pools and storms. They were talking about mermaids, um, anything nautical really. Lots of people wanted a single color chart like a Quaker design that had just one fabric to really set off the linen itself, or I'm sorry, one thread to set off the linen. Lots of people mentioned Halloween designs. Christmas ornaments was a surprising one for me. Winter scenes got a lot of hits. One for a Statue of Liberty with the linen as the sky. A mermaid, an old world map, several for red cardinals, um, trees, and a snail. I think those are all such wonderful ideas. The winner on this one is Nanette B. And she said she is a fabric floozy, which Nanette, you and I both, <laughs> she thinks with that fabric that that detailed, one needs a simple design so the fabric is showcased. A simple winter design would be lovely. Nanette, congratulations, you're the winner. And I really look forward to seeing what you choose to put on it. So I'll reach out in the comments and if you can send me your mailing address, I'll send you half of that fabric and you can wow us with what you choose to put there. All right, new giveaway this week. A lot of people have commented on Rise leaping, and obviously we discussed Greyhound jumps earlier, so I thought this was appropriate. This week I'm giving away called One Stag Leaping from Carriage House Samplings, and I love that it's charted in two versions, one on a dark fabric and one on a light fabric. It's charted in silk, NPI silk, but it's got a DMC conversion. So if you want to win this one, Mention the word leap, leap year, leap anything. Just throw it in the comments and we'll do a giveaway for that one next time. So Rye got a little leap in her clip at the end. Let's see, on to announcements. I think I've actually covered just about everything. The free chart section of the website should be up very soon and I will be showing a new model each of the next couple of floss tubes prior to the virtual market happening in March. And again, if your LNS is planning to attend, we're working hard to make it a good experience for them. It's not Nashville, but it's, it's what we can do right now. And hopefully it will be very positive and a good supplement. So thank you all for joining me today. We have puppy video at the end for those who are interested in seeing the leaping greyhound and a lot of sleeping greyhound. But it's been lovely to see you again. I'm enjoying 2021 and it's great to hear your comments. I look forward to more questions and comments from you and I will see you in two weeks. Thank you. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.